Today is something that I think is critical but frequently overlooked. It's calibrating your monitor for photo editing. We're gonna talk about some simple online tools as well as hardware specific products from Datacolor and X-Ray. Well, hey everyone, welcome to this week's Approaching the Scene. Uh, thanks for spending some time with me. I, I'm, I'm still kind of holed up uh, given Oregon's uh, shelter in place rule and gosh, I don't even know what week it is now, but no big photo trips for quite a while. So I've been bumming around the studio, doing editing, getting my place kind of cleaned up, doing a lot of landscaping, playing with the kids. Uh, and, and doing a lot of office hours, which is this fun new thing we've been doing. Every Tuesday morning, we get a big group together on Zoom and talk about different photographic topics and do a bunch of Q&A. And I bring my friends like Rick LePage and David Archer, who, who teach workshops with me, in to answer people's questions and just have a big group chat. Uh, and this week, we're going to be doing raw processing. We're going to talk about how to just kind of chisel and hone that raw image that you captured to get the tones and colors right to go for that creative finish edit that you might do later. We're going to talk about that basic process of getting the tone and color right. And I think it's really important before you ever get into doing any raw processing to make sure that the monitor that you're working on is calibrated in a way that what you're, what you're doing to the image is actually accurately reflected. Say you send it off to a print lab that has a color calibrated monitor system or a publication, uh, or even viewing it on a website from somebody else with a calibrated monitor. And I think a lot of people don't really think about that. And today's monitors have the ability to get really, really, really bright. And I think a real common thing that I see is people editing with their monitors turned all the way up, and then I view it on my color managed monitor, and it looks really, really dark to me. You know, photo editing, I tend to calibrate for printing, and I, I calibrate my monitor down to a really low luminance setting, a brightness setting of 80 candelas per square meter. We measure brightness in monitors in candelas per square meter, you know, just like miles per hour, or whatever else, it's just a, a phrase. And, you know, monitors can be more than twice what I tend to calibrate mine at. I calibrate it at 80. And that's just because when I calibrated at that soft proof, software proof my prints for the printers that I work with here or for labs that I work with, the prints come back looking like they look on screen. Paper just has a lower brightness level than a backlit LCD display. Uh, and so, you know, I, I've heard, be, I, I give this speech when I talk about printing and software proofing, and I hear a lot of people say, well, don't your images look too bright for people to have their monitors turned up too bright? And I, I would say I have two responses to that. The first is I really can't control, you know, what setting someone's looking at my, I don't know if they're on a, a CRT display from the 90s. I don't know if they're using an ancient cell phone to look at my photos. I really, I don't have any control. I do want the people who are professionals and working on color managed monitors to see my stuff and say, wow, that's really well edited. And I also just, I've never had anyone complain, wow, your images in your gallery look too bright. You know, I'd invite you to jump, jump over to my website, HudsonHenry.com, take a look. I don't think you'll, you'll find that the images are too bright. So this week in Office Hours, we're going to talk about raw processing. I really hope you'll join me. That's, that's a group of 100 people on Zoom, max. We've, we've had a couple days where we've sold it out. Basically, it's free. But uh, sign in if you want to be an interactive part and in the chat and in the group. Uh, it's also going to live stream on YouTube. We had some problems with that last week for people that tried to tune in on YouTube. My apologies. Uh, it's a learning process as we do this whole thing. But, you know, it's a really fun get together on, on Tuesday mornings and, and we take a lot of your questions. And I think it's going to be fun talking about raw processing images. And so as a prelude to that, let's talk about getting your monitor set correctly. And I think, you know, as you're looking at, at tone and whether or not you have the right luminosity set. There's a couple of online resources that you can use if you don't have your own colorimeter. And we're gonna talk about colorimeters, about hardware calibration tools from both X-Rite and Data Color. Uh, but in this kind of intro thing, I would say, you know, there's a, there's a website, and I'm gonna put links in the YouTube video. If you're on mobile, just touch the YouTube description, the, the title of the video, and it'll open up the, the, the links that are there. I've got links to my gear, I've got links to this stuff, I'll have links to these websites for you to use for free. Uh, and if you're on, if you're on the, the desktop or a laptop, just click show more in the YouTube description and you'll see all these links. 
So Photo Friday's monitor calibration tool is a really great, you should be able to see differentiation in every gradient here. And if you just read the site, it'll show you what you should be seeing. You know, I don't know if my, my screen capture software is gonna show this well enough, but I can see gradations, all this stuff passes. And I have this calibrated right now with my X-Rite uh, i1 Display Pro Plus. We're about to calibrate it with the Data Color Spider X in a second here. And then there's another site uh, from Lagoon that's got all kinds of cool checks and tests that you can run through here, and they're all explained in detail. So I'll put links to those. This is a much more detailed site. Um, so again, we're gonna. We're, th those are some resources. I don't find the test chart on your monitor, looking at it with the bare eye, to be the absolute best test of whether or not you've got accurate color. Um, but and, and even tone. I think you're way better off with a hardware calibration tool. And I, I've been for years sort of using x rites tools, the i1 Display tools. I have the i1 Display Pro Plus here, which has uh, got a nice wide aperture lens. It's got an ambient sensor. I don't really use the ambient sensor. I have controlled lighting conditions here in the studio, so I just calibrate it for my controlled lighting and edit that way. Um, but with data color, it's got all those same sorts of things, a slightly smaller lens. It's got a weight built in the same way. Both of them have sort of weights built into the cord so that you can just hang them over the back of the monitor and it balances out. You plug it in, you fire up their software. Both of them come with nice software solutions. I find them both to work really well. Uh, I1 has its I1 profiler. You plug in your colorimeter, you fire it up, and it's ready to calibrate your monitor. Mac and PC, they both work great. The Spider uh, also comes with data colors, calibration tools. Both of them have two sort of different levels of packages that you can buy. Uh, the data color one's a little bit more affordable and I've had a lot of people asking me about it and I haven't used a Spider product for a really, really long time. So I thought, hmm, it'd be interesting to try them out. And then I, I ran into some folks from data color and they sent me this really cool kit. I'll talk about the other stuff that comes in the kit. You can buy just this Spider X colorimeter at one of two different levels. It's sort of two different levels of software. One unlocks the ability to do projectors and a bunch of other things aside from your screen. Or you can get this kit, which is a really neat uh, option too. I'll talk about at the end. It seems like a lot comes in the package for the price. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how you go about doing a hardware monitor calibration. And I'm actually going to use my monitor's built-in um, uh, SpectraView software. I use an NEC monitor that does almost 100% of Adobe RGB color space, and it has its own built-in profiling software. I've tried both the I1, the, the X-Rite's i1 software and Data Color software. They both do a fantastic job, but since I'm using my monitor, I'm just going to go ahead and calibrate it that way. So you hang the colorimeter on your monitor, and it's often good, you just wanna tilt your monitor a little bit to make it hang sort of flat. There we go. Not a lot, just a little bit. And get it plugged into a powered USB port. I have a few powered USB ports sort of wired into the top of my standing desk here. Oh, you can hear it pop up. I'm gonna turn off my computer volume. And then I fire up my uh, Spectra View app. And it's gonna tell me, here we go. The X-Rite, yeah, we turn off the X-Rite app and I go into Calibrate. Boom, it tells me where to hang, it recognizes the data color spider. It's really critical for me that my sort of professional grade monitors software recognizes both colorimeters that I'm working with. We get that laying nice and flat, stop it from jiggling, and all I have to do is press continue. Now right now I have a bunch of lighting for the video on, so I'm just gonna shut that off really fast. Just excuse me for a second here. I'll turn it back on when I'm done. You really want to do this under your regular lighting conditions. So I'm going to go ahead in here and get things still and click continue. 
Oh, you know what? I'm gonna cancel this. Forgot to even mention the settings. I'm just using my generalized settings. Let's, let's back out of this really fast. Okay, yeah, so we've backed out of this. I'm actually just gonna, gonna well, it's fine. Uh, what I wanna showcase here is that I'm using my, my uh, white point. I forgot to show you that I have these settings sort of dialed in and saved in my SpectreView software. I'm setting the white point at 6,500 Kelvin. I got my gamma at 2.2. You'll hear people talk about different gammas. I think 2.2 has just become sort of standardized for photography. It used to be one thing for PC, another thing for Mac. Just, just roll with 2.2 at this point. Uh, and you see intensity. Some people are gonna call it luminance. Some people are gonna call it brightness. We're calling it intensity here in Spectra View 2. And I'm setting it at 80 point candelas per square meter. Uh, and I want just the native gamut and the contrast ratio to be the default. And all I have to do then is hit calibrate and we'll, we'll start this whole thing over. I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. Now again, I didn't really need to do that. I'm used to just kind of hitting continue because those settings are saved as my settings, but that was important to run through and show you what they were. And I'll probably speed this bit of the video up as it runs through and checks different color patches and test targets. All right, and it's done, and I'm gonna turn the lights back up here. And you know, you may not have the SpectraView software, but whether you use Data Color's built-in, you know, included software, either the Elite or the Pro package, or X-Rite software, they both do a really good job. And you can see it's got, you know, kind of a summary of what's happened. The profile has been created and applied to this monitor. It's definitely got, you can see how it's looking with uh, sRGB. It's definitely 100% included, maybe a tiny little bit of this corner here. This is just showing how much of the color models inside. You can see this monitor uh, essentially covers almost all of Adobe RGB's color space. That's that new triangle that's popping up and the calibrated monitor profile is this red, green, and blue triangle here. Um, so there you go, there's the display. Um, and you can run through and check some different things out. You can see its curve of calibration over time, not much different than the times I've calibrated it. it, it this monitor is a really nice high grade monitor. It's not drifting much at all. And it's obviously tracking it very, very similarly to my i1 Display Pro Plus. I've gone through, I've edited a bunch of images, you know, well, I've edited mil millions of images, I think, thousands and thousands of images with i1's products. And then over the last couple of weeks, I've been doing a bunch of stuff with the Data Color Spider X, and I, I think they both do just a fine job. So I could be happy to recommend either one of these products. Um, the Data Color folks sent this in kind of a cool package to me. They include this cool little kind of old school James Bond-like case, and inside it's got a whole bunch of fun stuff. It's got a little lens align like lens calibration tool. Now I tend to use Rican's um, kind of automated lens correction software, but that's another really pretty expensive product. If you were on the cheap a little bit, this thing does a fine job. You just kind of have to manually tune your lens at different calibration settings until you get it zeroed out on this chart. Really easy to use. I've played around with it. Um, it comes with this kind of neat little white balance and exposure calibration cube which you can literally, let me show you what this thing does. It's kind of surprising. You just, uh, you take your shot in a, in a condition that you're trying to get really good lighting in with that little cube in it. And let's say you shot it in the, the wrong white balance. Well, you can just run in here and click on that, boom, it nails the white balance. And then you can do some things like adjusting your, your black and white points. I'm in Lightroom here, I'm gonna hold down my my uh, option key, and you wanna, you wanna move your black point to where you just have some black in the circle, and then your white point, this should be pure white. So you can pull whites up until you just start kinda losing the whites in that. I'm losing a little bit on the case and the specular highlights, but you can kinda get where the edge of, of white ought to be, right there. These are specular highlights. So, it's, it's a nice way to just instantly know what should be pure black, what should be pure white, and get a nice neutral gray white balance by just throwing that out in your scene, and the whole thing is really pocketable. And it also comes with a nice big studio style color checker and gray chart, which you can flip from being a 
LUT creating profile chart, which you can use, you know, Lightroom or on one photo raw to create your own lookup table for a specific scene or a studio lighting condition that you can reuse on multiple photos, or you just have a nice white balance target. Now I, I've for years used, uh, x writes little field color checker. That's still probably the one that goes in my, in my photo backpack because it's so small and lightweight. It has the same basic things. But for the studio, the bigger one's actually really nice. So a pretty cool kit, you know, and, and a nice, it's a really pretty affordable price to get a lens align tool, a cool little white balance pocketable cube, a nice studio color checker, and the x write colorimeter. So I like the stuff. I think uh, I, can, I can easily and highly recommend it. Um, either one of these companies, you can't go wrong. I think the really important thing is that you make sure that you've got your monitor at least close to color correct and that you're working with it not too bright while you're editing. I think your photos are gonna come out a lot better and if you decide you wanna print some stuff for the wall, you're gonna get way better results with a calibrated monitor. I mean, you just have almost no control over what the output's gonna look like if you don't know what those base monitor settings are and that they're accurate. All right, so again, I really hope that, that you'll take this as the first step into joining me for uh, office hours on Tuesday to talk about how to go about raw processing your images, assuming that your monitor's calibrated well. Uh, sign up for that Zoom meeting. It's hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. I'll be happy to see all of you in there that can make it. Um, if for some reason we're full up, jump in on YouTube. You, you can't necessarily interact as much as you can in the YouTube meeting or in the Zoom meeting, but, but you can track it all. So, all right, everybody, thanks so much. I hope people are staying safe. I hope your families are safe. Uh, and if you're still sheltering from, from this situation that we've got worldwide, I hope that, uh, that you're finding some, some ways to enjoy family and friends, albeit potentially via technology. But uh, for me, I've been getting a lot of projects done around my house and my studio and spending some time with my kids, which I doubt I'll ever regret. All right, everybody, thanks so much, and we'll see you next week.